Hi, hello, how are you? Very welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Liz Kengonzi. If you're first time person here, you're very welcome. I'm always happy to see new people. Yeah, and happier to see the older ones. So, thank you. So today, it's a history lesson. Are you ready? It's about natural family planning, but we're going to talk about its origins and how far it has come so far. Most of us think this is something which has come up just recently, which is not true. It's not true at all. So I want to give you a history of where it originated, how it transforms, how where it has reached as of today. And the future is bright. When you look at history and look at where we are now, the future is bright for us in this area. So let's jump in. I'll try to explain as much as I can from what I understand from <laughs> the historical events. As far as 4th century, there was a method called Hippocrates. This method used to advise women, you jump up and down. Hmm? <laughs> You jump as high as you can. You make sure your legs touch your bums. Eh? And if you do that, you won't conceive. That was? Yep. There was one called Aristotle. That's in the 3rd century BC. Conception was most likely immediately before or after the menstruation. That was the concept of the Aristotle. The second century, there was something called Soranus. Soranus, conception more likely if the women, the woman has an orgasm or dilates the uterus. To avoid conception, women were advised to abstain during fertile time. That's the Aristotle theory now eh, coming in. You abstain during the fertile time. Hold your breath. Move as fast as you can <laughs> when you're doing your things you have to make sure you keep moving around so that you don't conceive anyway but the concept was you keep squeezing your body <laughs> i'm a terrible history teacher <laughs> anyway but also that point which makes me interesting in second century is that you always had to drink a cold drink like drink a very cold drink for some reason it would help you not to conceive mm. then we graduated to the ninth century the razes it's advised women to rise roughly immediately after they have had fun immediately rise up so vigorously squeeze yourself blow through the nose <laughs> several times and call out in a loud voice while jumping violently and backwards <laughs> It must have been interesting to be in this century. It must have been interesting to be in this century and you're risking to try natural family planning. Anyway, so continue 16 in 1600 or 1600. There was a method which was called fallopius. It was discovered and christened that the fallopian tubes, they, they christened the fallopian tubes. Eh? They discovered them and christened them. Then in 1662, Van Horn renamed the female testicles to ovaries, which is a very good progress because we see methods here now that elaborate more on that aspect. Then 1869, Squares noted a decrease in women's basal body temperature at the onset of a menstruation, but did not appreciate the significance of the preceding rise. So that's when the temperature, the body change in the temperature started now to, Van Horn brought it on board, which up to now we still see in some methods like the, the, the basal temperature method, we still see that it's being used whereby you keep testing your temperatures and you can easily get to know when ovulation exactly happens because of that rising temperature. So you can easily explain your body condition by the rise and fall of the body temperature. So that was a very good discovery in 1869. We are still moving. Another van in 1982, Van de Velde related the higher temperature in the latter part of the cycle to the activity of the corpus letum. 
Mambe mnyambe. That is so much biology, but the biologists know what that means. But now the high temperature was related to something more biological. 1928, Ogino, Japan, Knaus. Eh? Ogino is from Japan and Knaus from Australia. Independently established that ovulation occurs 12 to 16 days before the onset of the next period, which on average we normally consider as around 14 something. But now for these ones, they discovered, oh, I think ovulation happens between 12 to 16 days before the next period, which is very good information, which informs the current methods we are using that was discovered in 1928. But do you see how the knowledge is growing? Do you see how human beings are becoming wiser? Do you see how natural family planning is improving? That's why I'm telling you the future is bright. Yes. Yeah, so in 1937, Rubenstein and Lenzi related the increase in basal body temperature. Remember the other basal body temperature which was discovered way earlier, eh? by Van Horn. Now, these guys related to that that temperature raise as evidence of ovulation, which the current methods are actually still adopting. So science has actually proved that that thing was legit. For him, he noticed a rise in temperature. Didn't make sense. Now, these guys came and related that rise in temperature to ovulation, which is still accurate till today. So we thank God for these guys. Yeah. Then in 1950, a Dutch gynecologist first presented basal body temperature method to couples in an in intelligible manner to regulate birth. That's when like it came to life of like, okay, this body temperature thing can actually help you regulate pregnancy. And we shall be seeing how that actually even is still helpful in the methods of today. 1959, John Marshall introduced Holt's approach into the UK. 1968, the same John Marshall first prospective field trial on the basal body temperature method. That was when like, it went scientific and trials were made and all these things. 1968, same year, John and Evelyn Billings. <laughs> I'm happy because I've used this method and guys, it's legit. It is hard, but it works. <laughs> Yeah, they developed the knowledge about the role of cervical secretion into natural family planning method, the Billings ovulation method. I feel excited. You can think I'm even in beating. <laughs> this method is legit. My husband and I learned it. We used it. It has a lot of rules, a lot of rules. But once you've mastered your thing, it becomes a little bit easier. There's a book on Billings ovulation method. It's sold even down here in uh, this, the nun's bookshop, Paul Paul. Is it Paul Paul? John Paul? The bookshop, which is on Uganda Road here. They sell it. It's sold at Christ the King bookshop. It's sold in bookshops. I'm sure the others which I've not visited, but I know this nun's bookshop sells it. And it's like 18,000 shillings, Ugandan shillings. It's called Love and Life. Billings ovulation method. That book will teach you from scratch what the method is. And if you learn it, if you read it, the two of you, you can teach yourselves. You don't even have to wait for this video of me. But we used it for seven straight years and it worked for us perfectly. Perfectly. Yeah. So that was discovered in 1968. 1968 again, John Marshall, questionnaire survey of psychological experience of couples in BBT field trials also were done, and here they were discovering more about fertility and sterility. 1977, Edward F. developed methodology related to self-palpation of the cervix. That one saved to get dinner, yeah? Yeah, that, but you see the progress, how it's happening. 1981, I was almost born. First prospective trials on ovulation method. The other one I told you about, eh? the ovulation method was done those were the first trials and these were done by the world health organizations that's 1981 this is no longer even a catholic church situation the world health organization did their first trials in 1981 yeah then in 1981 still the effectiveness of combination of indicators of fertility was increasingly recognized through prospective studies so like other studies now started to come on board and to show like how if you combined all this information we have about ovulation, about cerv cervical secretion, beings of ovulation, how we can. Yeah. Then another huge discovery was made in 1988, my year of birth. Hmm. You see me here acting young. I'm old. <laughs> 
anyway 1988 lactation amenorrhea method this is called lam in short eh? that's when it was stated that's when it was like put officially out there consensus statement in the lacent so this one is whereby you breastfeed I'll, i will explain a little bit more in the other videos but these are the, this is the method you've seen people tell you that when you're breastfeeding you can't conceive like the concept behind that statement is where the lactation amenorrhea method comes from but it has its rules it has its requirements which most times we defy and then we blame the method Yet, actually, if you follow it to the dot, it, it works. It's been tested and people have used it. I have not, but people have used it and it works. But I'll explain in some videos later. But that is 1989. Then 1995, the hormonal assay and ultrasound determined that fertile times last from five days before the estimated day of ovulation. That's when they're like, okay, ovulation day is not the only day. There are some days which before ovulation are also fertile in case you have anything you can actually conceive when the egg is released which is very good information because this informs today method this informs the beads method this informs billings ovulation method this informs everything else that we are using currently that was discovered 1995 1999 a handheld computerized device that measures changes in the urine this was discovered. These devices are there. People buy them. You could get yourself one where you test your urine and then you get to know your fertility levels. I've not used that, but at least I've had experiences from couples that have used them and they also work. They require the same discipline, of course. 1999, introduction of my next exciting, <laughs> next exciting method. Introduction. Of... This is 1999, guys. Introduction of the standard days method which now is the most beautiful, like I told you. So I've moved from Billings Ovulation Method to Today Method. It's so, <coughs> I'll explain for you, at least Billings Ovulation Method and Today Method, those ones, I'll explain them because I've used them. So in 2001, Jennings V, the Today Method based on the presence or absence of cervical secretion, that's when it was fully rolled out. So these things have been there since second, century so please be confident know the thing you're using it's not you're not the first woman it's worked for other women it's been successful for anything that doesn't work cannot survive this long think about all these myths that we know and we hear about nothing can survive this long unless it's legit and it works and the beauty of this is that you will try it You'll try to conceive with it, it will work for you. You'll try not to conceive, it will work for you. So after you've tested it, all you need is the, the courage to start. Once you start, you gain the faith. My first month of trial, I was trembling because my baby was young. My daughter is now going to make seven. I've just given birth to her and I could not abstain. That's the truth. I could not. So I had to use the method which I am learning afresh. Yet I don't want to conceive. I was so scared in the first month. But when I saw my peas come back, I was like, okay, that means it has worked. Let me try one more month. Let me, and the more I tried, the more I tried, the confidence kept building. Am I confident now? Nope. But at least every month that passes, every year that passes, I'm like, okay, I can do this. Okay, I can do that. So the beauty is not that you never fail, but if you fail and you have an explanation why you failed, that's still a successful method. Yeah, so God bless you guys. That's all. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe, to like, to share with somebody. You never know who you'll help. People are struggling out there and they wish for this information. But the courage to come and teach such things is hard. It's very hard because these are things we do in the secrecy of our homes. It's very hard to come up and you're just jazzing as if you're jazzing lies. <laughs> but guys, it's true. At least me, I've used it, but my word may not convince you enough. So try it yourself. You will believe me. That's all. Anyone who has used these methods and can agree with me, please comment in the comment section. So that I don't sound like I'm just demoferi. <laughs> I'm Ferrari, people. But the proof is there. Things have been developing. These scientists can't put in their time, money, and all this knowledge for nothing. This thing works. Eh? So let's try it. Bye-bye.